always when you want to prove that a quadrilateral is cyclic, remember that you are supposed to show any one of this converse theorem so that they are presented in the diagram in the following manner. This is for number one, this is for number two, and this is number three. I'm going to concentrate with number one, where I'm going to give you the tips on what is it that you are supposed to do. Right? Now, if we look at the diagram A, B, C, D, that's the quadrilateral we are given. There is no much information we can deduce from there. But the only thing that you need to know is to show the hypothesis of this converse theorem, the starting point is to look into the quadrilateral, right? And when I say look into the quadrilateral, that means the quad you wanted to demonstrate that is cyclic for the possibility of adding the interior angles of the quadrilateral. That means we want to add this angle plus this one, plus this one, plus this one, and equate to 360, right? Or we can formulate two equations involving 90 degrees and then add them. That is within that quad, there will be a chance that you can formulate two equations equal to um, 90. Then you can add those equations to then come up with 180. An example here we have in the diagram, LK is a diameter of the circle and P is the center. RNS is a tangent to the circle at N, T is a point on NK and TP is perpendicular to KL. Angle PLN is equal to X. Prove that um, TPLN is a cyclic quad. Right. The fact that we are using the um, supplementary angles to say if I add the two, I get 180. That means we need now to come with the converse theorem that we are going to show. It's a hypothesis. So now if you look at the diagram itself, that is the quad we wanted to show. That's the quad you wanted to show that it is um, cyclic. Then we are saying T1, right, which is this angle, plus X, I get 180. Or N2 plus angle in TPL, I get 180. These are the two possibilities that we have. So you can show one of them, then conclude that it is cyclic. But I'm going to show the two of them so that you can learn something. Right, hypothesis number one, I want to show that angle T1 plus X is equal to 180. So the fact that T1 and X are adding, then when I come up with my approach, I should also be adding them. And the only thing I can do of the two possibilities that I've already told you as the tips, I need to add the um, interior angles of TPLN. That is the only option I have. So it becomes this, right? So I have added, I get this. Then obviously from the given information, N is equal to 90 subtended by the diameter um, KL. Then angle TPL is given as 90 degrees. Then you substitute in one to put the 90 and 90. When you add 90, 90, 180, subtract from the right hand side, you get 180. And by so doing, we have arrived at our hypothesis. All right, then we conclude that TPLN is a cyclic quad using the uh, converse theorem. Right, hypothesis number two, 
N2 is equal plus angle TPL is equal to 180. So the N2 is this angle, then the TPL is this angle, right? So in this case, I can no longer add the, if I add the inside I'm repeating, I won't reach that far, isn't it? But now I'm using the idea of coming up with the equation, but still observe, I'm still working with the quadrilateral that we wanted to prove that it is cyclic, right? So first I indicate that N is equals 90, is subtended by the diameter KL, then TPL is equal to 90, that is given information. Then I add one and two, right? You add the left-hand side, then add the right-hand side. This is the situation that I have here. Then when you simplify, you find you reach at this, which is the same as our hypothesis. Then you conclude that TPLN is a cyclic quad using the converse of opposite angles, cyclic quad. Now, key takeaway from this presentation, proving a quadrilateral is cyclic using the converse opposite angles supplementary. This is the diagram. If you could show this angle plus this angle is 180, then you are done. You can conclude that A, B, C, D is cyclic, right? The starting point is to look up in the quad for the possibility of one adding the interior angles of the quadrilateral, right? Or formulating two equations involving 90 and then add them. With that and the help of the given information, one can demonstrate that a pair of opposite angles of a quadrilateral is supplementary. Right, I think this will help. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe.